Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and this is the first video in a new tutorial series I'm going to be doing about the different plugins that come with FL Studio. So in the description and at the end of this video, I will have links to a web page and a playlist where you can see more of these videos as I record them. And please uh, feel free to leave a request and I'll do my best to record any plugins that are getting a lot of requests before I do the others. So let's get started. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the Wave Shaper plugin. It's an effect plugin that basically does wave shaping distortion. And wave shaping distortion is pretty cool because it can emulate other types of distortion and do its own thing entirely as well. So what I've done is I've routed a saw wave through the wave shaper to show you how it works. Now you can see when I play a note, a white line shows up in this little graph here. And basically what that line is, is an indicator of your input value. And you can adjust the input value by coming down here and adjusting the preamp knob. For the purposes of this video, I want it right at the end of the graph. So what do these other knobs do? This one is the mix level, which basically fades between the dry signal and the wet signal. And to show you an example, I'm just going to put a quick curve on here so you can hear this is the wet value. Okay. And then this knob here is the post gain. It's the final output level of the Wave Shaper plugin. Okay, so these knobs work pretty much like any other distortion would. And the cool thing about the Wave Shaper is this right here. And basically what this is, is an input-output graph. And this line resembles what is happening to the input at different levels. And what the input is, is the amplitude of the waveform. If you're not sure what the amplitude of the waveform is, basically with digital audio, it's you know, represented as a mathematical waveform. And the center line here is zero, and the top being positive one, the bottom being negative one. And because waveforms deal with both positive and negative values, you have this little switch right here, which swaps it between unipolar and bipolar mode. And the difference between the two is basically Bipolar mode gives you control of the full waveform uh, independently. And the unipolar mode gives you control of each half as a reflected image, basically. And I'm going to show you some examples now. And there's a reason I've chosen the saw wave that I have chosen, because it matches the line on the wave shaper one for one. So you'll be able to clearly see any changes I make to the audio. So this is bipolar mode. And this center line right here represents the changeover between positive and negative. So this is zero. So you can see I'm affecting the top and the bottom separately. Now if I switch over into unipolar mode, watch what happens. Now 
you can see it's a reflection of itself over the zero axis. And if I switch back from unipolar to bipolar, it'll show that. Now, because the saw waveform basically matches this line exactly, any changes I make to the wave shaper will be reproduced exactly the same on the oscilloscope. So you can see it's pretty much the same. Now, if you use other waveforms, it won't be exactly the same. Now the wave shape is still working the same way. It's still changing the input to the output. But because the sine wave is different from the saw wave, you know, it the amplitude goes up and then it goes down. So even on the top, you're getting up and then back down. So it, it looks different. Okay, now you can see in this example here, the line that represents zero is, you know, it's way up here, it's not at zero. And that's because, you know, I've made a wave shape such that where it's supposed to be zero, where the input is zero, the output is not zero, it's more than zero. And it'll do the same thing if I take it below in the opposite direction. And basically what this is, is DC offset. And DC offset is the term used for any time that the zero value for your waveform, what should be the zero value, is above or below zero. And to fix that in WaveShaper, all you have to do is hit the center button right here. And what it does is literally centers the waveform back to zero. So you can see, center brings it right back up. Now let's do that a bit differently. Um, okay, so there are a few more options in WaveShaper. Uh, one is oversampling. And basically all you need to know is that you know, it'll improve the quality of the output, especially if you have a lot of high frequencies coming through the wave shape. Okay, so because I have a pretty raw saw waveform, I think you might be able to see or hear the oversampling. So let, let's see. You can see the um, top of the waveform have quite a bit of, you know, a peak of movement. And I think if I put on oversampling, it'll reduce that. And l listen closely too. Yeah, so it's pretty hard to hear, but Basically what the oversampling is going to do is prevent aliasing, clean up your high end, and just make the output sound quality better. And you know, you should play with that and see if you hear any difference. If you don't hear a difference, you, you probably keep it off because oversampling does increase the CPU usage. Okay, so you have three options here. 
which are step, snap, and freeze. And these are the same as other uh, like envelope editors in FL Studio. Snap means that it'll snap any points you draw and will snap to the grid. So you see it's snapping. And if I turn that off, you can be a lot more free. And the step editing is basically you can draw in and it'll record each point that you draw in. And if you have the step editing with snap on, yeah, it'll draw in the points, but only at the snap values. And then freeze is generally if you're done editing your waveform. So this is the wave shape you want in your wave shaper. You can hit the freeze button and, you know, if you click on it accidentally, you won't mess up what you have. And if you do click on it and, you know, uh, you didn't want to do that. You can click on this arrow here and do undo step editing. And then you can also do the undo history. And it'll go back to a few undos. And in this little menu here, you have a few other options as well. Um, open state file and save state file is where you, know, you can open and save uh, basically different envelopes that you've drawn in the wave shaper. Uh, reset, I wouldn't really use reset because you know these are all the same as they're going to be in other envelope editors. And what reset ends up doing is it puts a line I believe right at the top, just a straight line, which isn't any, which isn't very good. If you want to reset, what I would say is do presets and default. I wouldn't use prepare for smooth editing either, really, because there's a similar issue with the uh, smooth editing. Uh, you have copy state and paste state, which, you know, maybe you want to copy. The, uh, what you have here and paste it into another wave shaper. You can do that that way. Uh, flip vertically. Yeah, not completely useful because there are much better ways of doing this, but if you do flip it vertically, you can, if you're on bipolar mode, you basically, you know, phase swap the signal. So if I put the mix value at 50%, you won't hear any sound. These are some other options. I'll probably do a separate tutorial sometime where I go through each of these because they aren't super helpful on the wave shaper. So I'll just make a separate tutorial on all the different envelope tools that work with the different envelopes in FL Studio. And when I have that done, I'll put a link both on the web page and the description of the video. So in this video, I've showed you how the wave shaper works and kind of explain to you how to use it. And, you know, what is it useful for? Uh, what, what I found it pretty useful for is in, you know, unique dubstep bases and hard style kicks, but basically anything that you want some cool, crazy distortion. You know, you can draw in, oops, you can draw in whatever shape you like, really and adjust the preamp, the mix, and just, you know, have fun with it to get some pretty unique and crazy sounds. Thanks for watching my tutorial video. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you want to learn more, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can watch new videos as soon as I upload them. After that, check out the Beat School website. I'll have the link in the description. All my tutorials are organized on the site so that you can easily find what you need by browsing through the different categories. 
There are also a ton of awesome resources to help you in every aspect of music production. And if you want to help support me, you can buy any of my sample packs, preset packs, or project files for only $5 or less. This gets you some great sounds for a great price and allows me to spend more time making these tutorials and working on the website. Thanks again for watching my video and have a great day.